So I'm back here watching season three of a show that I think is probably the best reimagining of a 90s sitcom that we've ever seen on TV. And we will see if season three can hold up to what season two and one did. I made a video about part threes and it goes beyond movies. It can go to, it can go to season threes of TV shows as well. That, that part three, that season three has a lot to live up to. So I wanna see if part three continues to meet that bar. And of course, how much it borrows from the original sitcom. Cause it's always a surprise. You know they're gonna borrow from the original show, but you don't know how they're gonna do it. Episode one, first things first, we are in summer. Summer, summer, summertime. In between that junior year and that senior year of high school, it's time to start thinking about after high school. We see Will hanging out at a country club. Right off the bat, you see that Will is trying to get on good terms with this one character, Vic Mensa. Then a big change here is that Carlton, while in rehab, got himself a girlfriend. And this actually has no connection whatsoever to the original show. The only part of the original Fresh Prince show that it reminds me of is that uh, Carlton had this. There was this one episode where Carlton met this woman. She ended up leaving and never being seen again. But hopefully this will have a happier ending. So Carlton gets out of rehab and they're, they're all back at the table eating dinner because she's still kind of shook about how he snapped at her back on season two. So she's wondering if this rehab really fixed him. And Princeton not initially accepting Carlton and him getting mad about it and ripping stuff off the walls. Is this the part where he goes into bowling? Is this because the original Carlton was never addicted to drugs. He he got accepted to Princeton just fine, but then it was the pressure of Princeton. So Will and Carlton are just casually at this hot dog stand. And then Will's father pops out of nowhere. Lou. Later on, Jeffrey, who I've established in the past two seasons as being more of a private investigator, head of security, than he is a maid. He confirms that, yeah, Lou has been in LA and he works as a barber. Like he already knew about that. Probably did. And being the head of security that he is, Jeffrey gets them into this new security system. The security system they had in Fresh Prince that ended up backfiring on them because Phil forgot the code or something. Here in season three, all of a sudden it's like, Will is kind of just not in the basketball like that anymore. He's already reached his goals of getting to this, you know, big promising basketball team. He may want to do something else, like start a business. He's now getting distracted by things like seeing his dad is a major distraction now. Carlton is not able to go any further in his education because of how he came out that day as a drug addict. So Princeton doesn't want him and Will wants something more. So this kind of puts them kind of in the same boat for once. Will pops up on his pops at his barber shop that Jeffrey knew about. They start the bond over basketball and Will is like, you know, I might want to do something more than that. And then Lou kind of chuckles at it. And then, you know, Will took offense. Like what, what is so funny? And Carlton kind of makes amends with Ashley here and assures her that he is, he's changed. He, he, he is a better person now and that he's sorry for what he did basically. And they hug it out. And Aunt Viv just really doesn't know if she can trust Carlton's judgment right now. And then this girl pops up talking about she's Carlton's boo. So she doesn't really like her that much. Carlton is apparently 40 days sober, which puts season three here just a month and a half after the events of season two. He gets a chance to talk to Vince Mince's character and gets on good terms with him because he's starting to see what Will sees. He's starting to see that networking through this guy. And, you know, that might be his best way because he can't get into college right now. So, you know, maybe he needs to start networking like Will is trying to do just in case things don't go the way they want it to go after they graduate high school, which is something that really happens in real life. We see Jeffrey go back to his own apartment. I've kind of forgot that he, uh, after the events of season two, he doesn't live with the banks anymore. He just uh, kind of works there part time now. He has his own place with Frederick, his son, and everything's all peachy. They're watching non-American football. Jazz and Hillary, even though they aren't a couple anymore, are looking like a matching couple. And Jazz here was actually being really rude to her while being at her event. So Hillary felt like she had to go ahead and kind of speed up the process of telling everybody that she was going to get married with new Trevor. And now his face is all scrunched up. They make an announcement together showing that he already proposed to her. He said, Hillary, will you marry me? Vic Mensa sees the Will and Carlton's potential. So he's going to get them into some kind of entrepreneur program if they pair up and you know, try to come up with an idea that they can pitch. 
they put a little more significance on this wine cellar that they have all of a sudden. I don't think that was there in the last two seasons, but this wine cellar all of a sudden that's there with the security code. I'm not really sure if there was any point to having that outside of being like a reference to Fresh Prince through the security system. Will tells Uncle Phil that he met Lou and that he's all conflicted about him, basketball and that. And Uncle Phil is like, you know, it's up to you. Do what you want to do. One thing's for sure is that Will is definitely trying to transition out of the whole basketball thing. He turns down whatever type of practice sporting event that they was doing to go with Carlton to start coming up with ideas for some kind of business. Will and Carlton are together now on the same track trying to come up with an idea for this entrepreneurial thing. Good luck coming up with a legitimately new idea in 2024. But for once, Will and Carlton are locked in on the same thing. They did this a few times on The Fresh Prince. It was rare, but when they actually came together for the common goal, like they got a lot done. But while they're trying to do all this brainstorming, Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil are like, well, y'all need to get a job. Can't let a 17 year old just enjoy their summer. They at least got them a hookup job through uh, the uh, country club. And despite them being rich, it's like now they're the bus boys. They're the guys cleaning the golf carts. His name is Demarcus, by the way, Demarcus. Ashley is not too fond of Demarcus. She prefers jazz. And this could connect back to the Fresh Prince as Ashley and Trevor were never even really introduced. Trevor is just some stranger that Hillary is getting married to. But when it comes to Will's friend, jazz they've actually had fun playing on the drums and whatnot they have a similar connection here on Bel Air through jazz's music business here we get a good glimpse of uh Aunt Viv's assistant slash friend she makes it very clear that she doesn't have a husband so she's drama free now a big easter egg that I noticed in this scene is that jazz has this shirt with that sun symbol that immediately reminded me of the summertime record with DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Like it's in the cover art. So this logo, clearly just a symbol of the sun and summertime perhaps, was put on Jazz's shirt. And that's the summertime single connection I've been looking for. Vivian's new friend introduces her to this chef, a chef with a social media presence who has Vivian eating out of the palm of his hand. Now, Uncle Phil is still in some kind of business arrangement with this woman that he knew from the past who still has feelings for him. This was established back in season two. They ended up kissing here on Bel Air in the last season. And now here they are after hours getting maybe a little too comfortable over takeout and whiskey. So Aunt Viv may not like Carlton's new girl, but she definitely likes Jackie as she just pops up at the house, apparently asking her for a recommendation for a college that she's applying to. But I mean, she could have done this over an email. Is she just trying to get in front of Will again? Erica, the business partner of Phil, is very weird around Phil's wife. She's probably overtaken with guilt, not just by knowing what they did in the last season, but knowing that she is willing to continue that behind Aunt Viv's back. So now she avoids Aunt Viv any chance that she gets. It's reminded here that unlike the sitcom, Uncle Phil really likes jazz, probably admires his drive for business and all that. And jazz could probably easily get Hillary's hand in marriage if he could just get that hand back. Will almost walks in on Frederick talking about something shady. Jazz actually gets offered a business loan through Uncle Phil, probably through Hillary, after she found out that he was needing the money for his business. And he turns it down. The guy's pretty stubborn. Like he's petty enough to turn down a loan from Uncle Phil and Hillary. Yet here he is at Uncle Phil's business, even though he doesn't like Hillary anymore as he claims he's there for her father. Why Jazz is still here becomes very clear in the next scene when he finally gets some alone time with Hillary. We learn more about Jeffrey as he sits with his son watching non-American football. And as you could probably guess, he was gang affiliated back in London. Frederick showed up and he tried to change that lifestyle. But now it seems that someone knows about him and Frederick hanging out and are low-key threatening Frederick. So now Jeffrey's antennas are up. Like how bad is the gang affiliation? How deep were you in to where you can't even fly to another country to get away from it? At the end of the episode, Jackie shows up again. 
it's starting to seem like Jackie might be kind of chasing after Will, which is different from the Fresh Prince Jackie, which kind of seems like she was, she was she was really just doing her own thing and Will was kind of chasing after her. Jeffrey is still on bro code with Uncle Phil because he knows all about what happened between Phil and Erica last season. But even when Aunt Viv brings it up, Jeffrey's like, I don't know what you mean. The guy who notices everything says that he didn't notice anything weird about Erica. This season, he's just minding his own business. Speaking of kisses accidentally being seen, Ashley did see Jazz kiss Hillary. And while Hillary is like, yo, be quiet about that. That's just between us. Ashley's like, yo, tell your fiance. I don't like him no way. And while it's none of his business, Jeffrey does try to help Uncle Phil get another client to try to transition him away from Erica. Will and Carlton come up with this new business idea called Black Cess. Not sure what it does, but they got a logo. Ashley is hanging out with her friend here, and we find out that she's been writing raps. She's been writing some poetry. She's trying to be a rapper. And this is the first real evidence that we get that Ashley is trying to get into singing and music. And that is a connection to the Ashley in later seasons of The Fresh Prince, where she just straight up starts singing, becomes a pop star. They don't go too deep into it though in this season, besides just showing that she has an interest. Will and Carlton get their new business out there by promoting Black Cess through a car show event. And the promotion of this brand new business name with this brand new logo just comes kind of easy to them. This is not how it actually is in real life. Ashley's not the only one who knows about this uh, jazz kiss from Hillary, by the way. You got Hillary's uh, little friend here who knows who is pushing that she still gets with Demarcus because it would just it's just a better look. Jazz is at the car show and he very sadly has to put up his car, that same blue car he had in the pilot, that same blue car that was inspired by the actual car from the actual Fresh Prince show. He has to sell that now for his business. Frederick is at the car show too and he's just kind of having a good time being shady. Carlton's girlfriend shows up at the car show too and she just so happens to drive a purple Hellcat. Oh, and Jackie's there too. Of course, just to be helpful and to promote their uh, their business. As a friend, we finally see in this scene the contrast between Will and Carlton trying to raise attention to their business idea versus Jazz having to sell his car because of his business. One is rising while another one falls. Will wants to help Jazz out. He feels like he owes him that much as Jazz has been helping him out in the past. So this new power couple comes up with the idea of getting involved in a street race. They make a deal with the guy for like 30 bands. If they win, they get the money back for Jazz so he doesn't have to sell his car. All of a sudden, Will and Carlton are street racers. And next thing you know, this is not a Fresh Prince reboot. This is a Fast and Furious 2 reboot. Will is the racing newcomer who needs the money and Carlton is the friend who surprisingly, for some reason, knows a lot about cars, more so than the newcomer does. It will actually makes a Fast and Furious joke right here. Like now they're in full on need for speed mode. They got the whole cinematography down and everything. They sort of easily lost this matchup, but then after getting split up, Carlton has to take out his phone and look up navigation of where they are so that they can get back on track. And then somehow they must've been using Google Maps or something. They find a shortcut through an alley to get back in front of the other guy who was on the right track to begin with. Realistically, that would not have happened. Will ends up winning and they get the money. It's almost like they're the main characters or something. Everything just goes well. Now we see that Jackie is the fifth wheel and Lisa calls her out after she tries to give them a hookup to a late night restaurant or something. One thing about Lisa is that she keeps it real. She is straight up like, Will, you cannot make up your mind here. What? I don't have time to compete with whatever you got going on with Jackie. I don't have time for it. Meanwhile, Frederick has gotten himself into some money trouble. Will and Carlton help him out of it, even though he didn't deserve to be helped. He apparently just hustled somebody. And then Jeffrey pops up out of nowhere as if he's been watching them the whole time. Thing is, apparently people use trackers on other people through their phones. I, I didn't realize that. I don't know if that's a real thing that people do. Like they can see the other person where they are at all times. And Jeffrey has one for Frederick. So that's how he knew where he was. Ah. And Will and Carlton confront Frederick on some good cop, bad cop type stuff. But of course, Frederick is like, mind the business, blood. This doesn't concern you. Aunt Viv confronts Monica on why she's been acting so weird. And Monica goes ahead and tells her what happened. So now there's a problem. So Hillary visits LaMarcus at a football practice session. And LaMarcus, the new Trevor, ends up falling out. Now, I called this in season two. If 
this is the new Trevor, and it is, and he actually tries to marry Hillary, something bad is going to happen to this man, just like it did in The Fresh Prince. Of course, that was more comical, this would be more dramatic, and we're already seeing some of that drama in episode 4 here. The Marcus falls out during football practice, and we are now at a hospital. All the nurses and all the other people going back and forth while they sit around and worry, it's pretty well shot. And before the title sequence even comes on, they confirm that Trevor is going to be okay. You don't see a whole lot of product placement on Bel Air here, but uh, I've, so far I've seen Apple, who's been very loose with their on-screen advertisements lately. And now we got some body armor, hydration beverage. Will is often put in these situations where he kind of has to keep a straight face and not snitch on someone like with jeffrey here about what frederick was doing i feel like he did that a lot on the fresh prince too it's like will had this no snitching rule that he brought with him back from philly we are reminded that aunt viv has this gallery that she's an artist and she still has this gallery that she's running now or whatever but it takes a huge back seat in this season to everything else that's happening. Lamarcus wakes up to greet Hillary and we find out that he has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a pretty serious heart condition that tends to make athletes drop dead. It's a heart muscle disease. Like if their heart starts beating too fast through like exertion of physical uh, sports and all that, the muscle around it could just crush the heart and they could just die suddenly. It's actually happened several times in history. And this actually hits pretty close to home. Most of the time, this condition is caught before a person is able to actually get out on the field and start exerting themselves. But sometimes it just goes under the radar and they get out there and then it's worst case scenario, it just happens while they're playing. In this situation, his heart actually did stop on the field. He actually died on the field and they was able to revive him. Now between him and his father, they're like, oh yeah, you'll be back out there in no time. Uh-oh. There is actual stress on Will and Carlton to actually have this business up and running by the end of the summer. It goes along with this entrepreneur plug-in that they're into, where at the end, there's going to be this presentation and they need to have it all situated by that presentation. I assume this is a real thing that up and coming entrepreneurs try to do. Uh, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm a content creator type. Will and Carlton and Lisa and, and, and what's your name? They're double dating and having fun on the beach and whatnot. And Uncle Phil and Vivian's marriage is kind of rocky, rockier than it was before. Now that Aunt Viv knows about that kiss. So now as a way to get away from Phil and all that drama, she's out with her friends, including the messy single one. And there's nothing wrong with going out with friends. But then they open up the account of that chef that they met through the, the messy single friend through Vivian's IG. And one of her friends starts just liking all of the pictures. What could go wrong with that? Carlton's girlfriend is, is such a good girlfriend. I mean, that is her car that he's driving, isn't it? I don't know what this business actually is that they're doing. And of course, Jeffrey starts doing some investigation on Frederick. And it seems like he's getting in deep. Will Ashley and Carlton make a anniversary breakfast. And while this doesn't quite go the way they want it to, it reminds me of the time they did this in the Fresh Prince for Jeffrey. Yes, it's their anniversary now, and uh, they're still <laughs> dealing with some issues. And Viv wakes up to this chef, who's apparently, his name is Sharif. He gets into her DMs after seeing all of her supposed likes from the previous night. We see that Ashley is on her Apple Mac making and editing beats, apparently to some stuff that she recorded. And it's like, oh yeah, I started a band and I've been singing a little bit, been rapping a little bit. We see none of this, by the way. It's just, we just kind of see the aftermath. Again, like with the other two seasons, Ashley has probably taken the biggest back seat amongst all the other characters. Even when now they're trying to give her some kind of storyline they don't give us the details and jackie rolls up so they both work at the country club and this has to be a parallel to jackie and will working at that bookstore on fresh prince she's still in the picture because they work together through some kind of art academy business type related type thing vivian ends up having lunch with this chef guy uncle phil actually pops up on them on some oh i wanted to surprise you by taking you out to lunch, but I see, I see you've already been taken out. He must have a sixth sense or something. These weird coincidences will happen a lot in real life. You'd be surprised. 
Ashley and her little friend here has creative differences with the music and the band or whatever that we don't see. And Ashley is pretty quick to dismiss her. I don't think we ever see this girl again. After Jeffrey insists on following Frederick and finding just exactly what he's up to, you meet Frederick's mom, Jeffrey's ex, Penelope. We find out between them two that they are both running from this gang affiliated lifestyle from London. And because of this guy named Roman, who I think was Jeffrey's former boss or something, Frederick felt like he had to go out there and earn some more money for himself and his mother. Ashley ends up literally replacing that friend of hers with this new guy, this he, they kid who came over for band auditions, this band that we don't see. And upon Carlton doing better with his sobriety and all that, Phil and Vivian give him his privacy back. Carlton's like, I love you guys. And they all hug it out. And then this kind of makes Will feel some kind of way. Makes him start to miss having parents around him. And he ends up sending one of those messages to his mom. So Vi immediately comes back to hang out with Will. Their merch selling business is doing so well, they're shipping worldwide. I'm sure anyone who tried running a clothing business knows that it does not happen that fast. They're only like a month into summer at this point. No one gets this much success off of a brand new business that it's not even a business. It's, it's an image. It's a concept of a business. This black says it's, it's a nice name. They've been slapping it on shirts and selling it worldwide basically and that's all this is I, I don't really i think this whole thing is just something to just hold down will and carlton in the same thing during this whole season and them working together at the country club along with jackie that is all parallel to the freshman year of them working at the bookstore at the college carlton is running this account basically he said himself he is not the influencer type. Being an influencer is not something you can just jump into. And it's going to take more than a month to have over 400 people seeing your live stream. Assuming this is like TikTok or something. And assuming they aren't massive celebrities, which they're not. They're just rich. So again, this whole entrepreneur thing is, is very unrealistic. It does not go that well that quickly. Like the show and the writers are just giving Will and Carlton something to do. There's this whole thing in the background with Phil and his business as a lawyer trying to come up in the ranks. Like it's not that interesting. And then of course you have uh, Carlton and his girlfriend. Her, her name is Amira. Like they're basically trying to find a post rehab get together meetup place that they can both enjoy. Meanwhile, old boy here might be jealous of Amira. That's that's a whole different thing. That's not important. So Ashley has full on made this guy who showed up on her doorstep the other day her new best friend. All because they can both vibe on whatever vision they have for this music that they're doing. Ash is now what you would call a songwriter. And Will brings up a big reason why he wanted his mom to come over. He wants her and Lou to get together and talk it out. And she has a big problem with that. This is an episode of high anxiety casual meetups. And the first one we have here is with Jeffrey, his ex, and this Roman character that they mentioned. And who is this Roman guy? None other than OG Jeffrey. He plays the mysterious mob boss from London very well. You don't really see it coming. And knowing how toxic these gang affiliated families can be within the gang affiliated family. It has me wonder if this Roman. character might be the father of Jeffrey. He did call him boy and Jeffrey can't seem to shake this man no matter what. So they might be family. Will gets Vi and Lou to meet up in a neutral place, which ends up being this post rehab facility that Carlton and Amira goes to. Basically a church after hours. And they end up saying a lot here. They end up revealing a lot. It's, it's very therapeutic. And we finally see Will make amends with Lou while Lou make amends with Will's mother. Something the original show definitely did not have time to go into. Jeffrey reveals to Uncle Phil that yes the life he had back in London with the gang and everything it's caught up with him. There's a mob boss who knows where he lives and knows about Frederick and what he's been doing and he also knows that if he doesn't move correctly this could end up falling back on the Banks family. So he has to make a smart decision here. He can't just be like oh screw you. <laughs> I'm an American now. Jazz has a little new girlfriend or whatever that he's talking to. That's not really important. 
But Jeffrey goes into a stash that he had and tries to bribe his way out of this mess. Uncle Phil and Vivian are planning a vacation. They're bonding more than ever after it was revealed, you know, that they both could have options, but they choose to stay here. They are in love and Phil has made it apparent that he will not be jealous of some other guy. He's going to make the best of what he has, which is the right thing to do. They're kind of making up for all that little drama that was happening. And in the opening scene, you kind of see them looking at each other in the mirror as he holds her. And this is definitely some kind of throwback to that scene from Fresh Prince. Yeah, Phil and Vivian end up getting real comfortable in this episode. They meet up with some friends. Some of Uncle Phil's alpha, beta, sigma males friends comes with their wives and they just have a good vacation. And while they're away from the house, Carlton convinces Jeffrey to get lost while he and Will just have the whole place to themselves along with their girlfriends. And Jackie finds a way to show back up with a plus one. And they all just happen to work at the uh, country club. So this group that Vivian and Phil has at this vacation spot are getting really casual, really loose. All while Will and Carlton's group back at the house gets kind of tight and awkward. Plus one from work realizes that he's the only one in this pool who's never banged anyone else in this pool. And Jeffrey and Penelope, his ex, are out just having a drink and they're basically dating again at this point. Yo, G, what's my name? The Prince, right? I know how to deal with one. Tensions rise back with Will and Carlton's double date thing because of course, it comes up that Will is in this love triangle between Lisa and Jackie. Jackie, who was there because Will invited her, and the Myra points this out, that Will is in this love triangle. He can't make up his mind. And this hilariously contrasts with Vivian and Phil just having the time of their lives, drinking and chatting it up with each other. It's implied that they start to mess around with the other couple who turned out to be possibly swingers. It's implied that they don't go through with it, but they find the whole situation hilarious and it kind of just brings them even closer together. At the end of the episode, everyone just has a good time except for Will. So DeMarcus is out of the hospital and they've launched a whole ass business selling clothes that say black sets on them. Phil doesn't like the fact that Ashley is dressing a little different and has this guy over a lot. And he tells Vivian that he knew that Ashley was kind of in the girls and it was totally okay when she had that girl over all the time. But now in the, now when it's a boy, he has an issue. The guy himself is bi-curious. Ashley points out the hypocrisy they're doing some kind of partnership exercise at the gym here, circling around the Vic Mensa entrepreneur character, glazing him. This one guy is just straight up slurping him up, like calm down. But then he brings out actual WWE wrestler. Her name just happens to be Bel Air. I'm guessing she likes the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And her hair is a paid actress. And, and some extra drama brews up between Amira trying to keep a secret between Lisa and her. Amira was packing some drugs, but she didn't use any. And then Lisa found out, Lisa told Will. It honestly went of all went over a lot better if Will wasn't just so blunt about his feelings. Like you can always tell when something's up, he's not a very good liar. It got kind of messy. It was between him and Lisa trying to protect Carlton from Amira, even after Amira didn't really do anything. So it got pretty messy in the end here, but nobody got hurt. So Trevor, Demarcus and Hillary have been planning their wedding. They've already, they've already started. But Demarcus Trevor is like, let's do it in a week. Let's do it right here at your parents' crib. Hillary Burns! <laughs> yes, Trevor! Frederick keeps getting himself into trouble over gambling and hustling people. And he's starting to bring his work home with him. Jazz has gotten involved with something on the back end with Will and Uncle Phil's clients, all while trying to promote Black Sess. Jazz has never gone to jail on the original Fresh Prince, but it kind of reminded me of when Will was in jail and Phil had to come bail him out. Despite all the drama happening between Carlton and Amira and Lisa, Will has to pull the trigger on a deal that they got over this pitch that they made that actually turned out to be successful. And Will at this point seems to be the only one who kind of cares about this uh, investor situation at this point. Carlton is not thinking about it and he blames Will for being selfish. Lisa is messed up because as a swimmer, she can't look at a body of water anymore without seeing Amira being in the water, almost drowning. On a, a lighter note, Hillary 
meets up with Jazz, and they agree that they need to get each other out of their system. Jazz is like, one more night. Hillary's about to get married, but there's still a thing between her and Jazz. Carlton is kind of losing control over what happened with his girlfriend, and um, he ends up meeting his old drug dealer. And surprisingly, the drug dealer is showing that he has a soul. He doesn't want to supply Carlton any more drugs right now, because he knows He's trying to recover. And Carlton's like, fuck you. Jeffrey is realizing that Frederick is out here in these streets because Jeffrey used to be in these streets and he, Frederick looks up to him. He wants to be like his pops. Jeffrey confirms that someone's been watching them this whole time and they get closer and closer. Penelope has gotten involved and now Jeffrey has to do something at this point. He can't just keep ignoring it. Apparently he can't buy his way out of it. The rest of this episode is actually pretty reflective. Um, Carlton is dealing with trying not to relapse all while dealing with what almost happened to their friend Amira. And Carlton's about to hit a bump in the car for the first time in, I guess, two and a half months at this point. And he catches himself in the mirror looking at himself. He's looking at the man in the mirror. And with the help of family and friends, he is able to not go back down that path again. Meanwhile, Hillary and Jazz had their night together. It wasn't just about sex. They was they hung out pretty much just bonding a little bit way too much. Like you would think that they were the ones getting married. And that's pretty much the gist of this whole episode, the big Hillary wedding. Now, business partners, uh, Will and Carlton try to work with this guy that they used to hate back in school. But oh, Carlton still hates this guy's guts. Like, I don't even remember why they hate each other. I just know that Carlton really went off on his ass that one time. Phil lately has not been able to keep his hands off of Vivian. Like, they've been active after a period of not being active. So Jazz is just getting dressed, right? And he tries to put a shoe on and he feels something hard in his shoe and, and, and he, he reaches for it. He pulls it out and it's Hillary's engagement ring. I'm not really sure where this venue is for this wedding, but Jazz basically has to get that ring from Inglewood all the way over to where they are. And through this event, Will meets the boyfriend of his mother and he's very protective over her this is something that they did in the fresh prince they all go through this segment of taking pictures for the wedding and even though it's not that big of a deal in real life to just take wedding pictures there's something different about this time that they do it you have jeffrey here taking pictures with will and carlton and for some odd reason he's feeling sentimental it's because jeffrey knows something that they don't he's maybe he feels like this might be one of the last pictures they take with each other. That being said, someone taking these pictures, it, that's gonna be their last picture. The anxiety in this episode is already starting to kind of slowly rise. And if it's not, if it wasn't from the ring that Jazz had, it's the subtle little clues that, you know, something is about to change forever. It's very important to treasure the pictures and the memories you actually have of people, whether or not, whether you're taking them through a camera or you're taking them through your face. Because there actually is such thing as real life foreshadowing that something bad may happen or that you may not get another chance to take this picture. Real life foreshadowing is a thing. Treasure the memories and the pictures that you have because those might be the only memories and pictures that you will ever get. Outside of the anxiety already made through this wedding, through foreshadowing and secrets, everyone seems happy. And Inglewood apparently is not that far away because Jazz ends up making it with the ring. He had to fly there though. Like, I don't know, imagine flying, having to fly to someone's wedding to give them their ring and no one else knows about it but you, them, and their cousin. Jazz, of course, has had plenty of time to second guess this whole thing and that maybe the, he thinks that Hillary leaving her ring at his crib was a sign and it, it, it probably was. I mean, real life coincidences, real life foreshadowing, but I don't think it's something worth ruining this wedding over and, you know, neither does Will. So he's like, yo, do what you need to do, but do not ruin this wedding. So surprisingly, Jazz makes his way up to Hillary, no problem, gives her ring back and everything seems to be okay. Nobody else sees them together. Hillary tries to hug him off, and then boom. Caught your ass, didn't I? 
right before Jazz leaves. He's like, yo, I should wring your little neck. And Hillary decides to finally come clean on what happened after all that. At this point, you really start to feel bad for Trevor LaMarcus. He didn't deserve to find out about all this on his wedding day. Y'all could have at least given him a, a day to call it off. It's very unfair, and, and the guy has a heart condition. Trevor LaMarcus is just a tragic character at this point. He's, out of everyone here, he's the innocent one. They find LaMarcus on this bench, and it's giving forced gump. Hillary comes and does the right thing and sits down with them and talks it out with them, but, you know, still feel bad for the guy. They go back to the wedding, assuming everything's all good. And there's this long anxiety draw between them on the bench and the moment LaMarcus has to come up on the stand with Hillary. We don't know if LaMarcus has just decided to change his mind on the whole thing and not do it. We don't know if something happens to him on the way back. We don't know if he's gonna show up at all. And they're just going through everything as scheduled, like nothing's wrong. But we all know something is very wrong. But Trevor LaMarcus does make it on the stand and they do have a successful marriage ceremony. And then we see Jeffrey at the end of it, just kind of scoping everything out and like I pointed out before when he was taking pictures, he was being extra sentimental about this, as if this may be the last time he's with the banks. The Amara situation wraps up with her going back to a rehab center that specifies on specific trauma that was connected to her addiction. And this rehab center is on the other side of the country for some reason. We may not be seeing her again. And same as Jeffrey, oddly enough, as he ends up leaving a letter to Phil. And it's very final. And in an attempt to protect the banks, himself and his family, Jeffrey has decided to cut ways and, I guess, go back to London to settle this debt he has. That's what I'm assuming. And so the final five minutes of season three, we find out a lot. Aunt Viv is pregnant with baby Nikki, no doubt. And Hillary and LaMarcus are having their honeymoon. Will is finally catching up to the fact that Jeffrey is gone or planning to leave along with Penelope. And Will actually ends up getting kidnapped, abducted, uh, kidnapped. He's kidnapped because he's still 17 by this very sus looking silver and black vehicle we've been kind of seeing all season low key. And LaMarcus, after a few drinks and lying in bed, Trevor doesn't wake up. That is season three. And I tell you, I, I called it, I knew this LaMarcus guy was Trevor. I knew this was gonna happen. Anyone knowing how Bel Air has been writing their stuff out, they've been subtly putting different parts of the original Fresh Prince in the show. They've been cleverly, cleverly writing out every little thing that they got from Fresh Prince into the show. And I knew that if they were writing in Hillary's Trevor, they didn't use his name, but if they wrote in Trevor one way or the other, they was going to have to make Hillary a widow. And if they made her a widow on a comedy, you know they got to do it in the drama. So it was inevitable. Again, I'm very, very sad for the LaMarcus character, the Trevor character. I mean, both of them were victims. My lady and I are trying to have an intimate moment. Oh, I get it. You're trying to make me jealous. So after all that, I would say that this season definitely checks all the boxes for what a season three, part three situation should be. And it matches the bar that it had from season two. Lighting, choreography, writing was all on point, just as it was in the previous seasons. Nothing was held back. The costuming and set design specifically stood out more than just about anything in the show. It's like, it used to be, you know, Hillary stood out as being the fashionista or whatever. Everyone is low-key dressing up. Like Bel Air is supposed to be one of LA's wealthiest suburbs and you can tell they're dressing up to it. You can tell through the locations, the shots that they take, the backgrounds, the foregrounds. This has to be how wealthy modern day LA residents live. And yet still somehow it's not too bougie. It's still very black, very believable. And when you gather up season three, two and one, this whole show, as I was proven back in season one, this whole show is a great example, probably the best example I've ever seen of a old sitcom meant to be a comedy rewritten to be a modern day drama. And if it can work with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, it can work with other shows as well. And about the good writing, it is well written. It's not 
perfectly written on everyone's side. Like there's still big holes or surrounding Ashley and what she's up to. And But overall, it focuses on what needs to be focused on. And the themes are all there. The importance of family, the importance of starting a business, keeping your friends close and your enemies far away, why you probably shouldn't lie so much. It's all there. We had our cameo with the gentleman who played Jeffrey. And I think there's even more story to be told through that. It got kind of crazy at the end there, but what drama doesn't? It's currently rated a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb, but I'd, I'd give it a 6.7, 6.8. There are similar shows like this, but as far as reimagining and rewriting something from decades ago, this has to be one of the best to do it. And again, I would like other shows from the 80s and 90s to try to do this. Well, that's all I got for the Bel Air season three. Like and subscribe if you haven't already to Retro Sick for all things random nostalgia and interesting coincidences surrounding the said nostalgia. And I guess I will see you in the next video.